Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about diffraction gratings. These are systems that comprise of not just one slit, not just a double slit, but many, many, many slits very close together. And it turns out when you get many, many, many slits very close together where diffraction and interference can happen, exciting, exciting things happen. Uh, all right, so this is an HL topic under 9.3. Here we go. So here's the idea. We have a diffraction grading is just a system of many, many, many slits. You do want to be familiar at this point with the different patterns that we get from diffraction and interference. Uh, all right, first picture here, of course, is our single slit diffraction pattern. When light goes through an opening and spreads out, we do see some interference happening within that pattern. Huygens principle gets into that a little bit, but we see this very wide, bright central maximum and then much dimmer secondary maxima. Um, once we start adding more slits, though, things get exciting because now we add two source or multiple source interference to the diffraction pattern. And so the double slit pattern is, of course, the two source interference pattern modulated, we say, by the single slit uh, envelope, if you like. Right, so the, the two source interference happens inside of here. And you want to be kind of familiar at this point that as we add more and more and more and more of these slits, what happens is the uh, light essentially gets focused and redistributed. And so these bright spots get narrower, they get brighter, and they stay the same separation apart. All right, so we get these very narrow, very bright spots. A diffraction grating, you just add a whole bunch of slits and you make these points really, really, really small to the point that they look like just pinpoints of light. All right, but those are the patterns of single slit and double slit that you absolutely, positively, definitely want to know for the IB. They love like this graph, especially. Um, you really want to know the double slit pattern. And so multiple slit is very similar, but you just get them narrower and brighter. Um, all right. So that's what a diffraction grating is. It has a lot, way more than five, of equally spaced slits. And the key thing with a diffraction grating is they're usually very close together, much closer than like in a um, double slit or anything like that. All right, so of course, we're going to get very bright, focused maximums. That's the idea. Uh, we'll look a little bit very briefly at the kind of geometry setup of this. Again, it's all about path difference. Um, and thinking about that in terms of wavelength. But so it's very similar to two source interference. The only difference with uh, diffraction grading really um, is that we're not, we can't do small angle approximation anymore. The kind of point of a diffraction grading is to spread light out a lot based on its wavelength. We want big angles. And so we put the slits very close together, um, usually by scoring some kind of material. And so the angles are going to be big. So we can't call sine of theta about equal to theta anymore. All right, and what we see is that there's total destructive interference immediately outside of our maxima. So the bright spots are very bright, and right outside of the bright spot, it's totally dark, which again is kind of the point. You want to really separate these colors by wavelength. Okay, here's a picture of a sketch of a, of a diffraction grating. So here you see all these little kind of openings, and we're just looking at a few of them. But again, the same exact idea. Here's like a portion of the grading, right? There's many, 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 perhaps thousands of slits. Um, but so the light gets um, diffracted. And let's say we have some maximum down here that we want to think about. So we can look at the path difference. Uh, just like before, this is where the setup is the same. The path difference is D sine theta, where D will be the spacing of my slits, the separation between slits. Um, that's just how the geometry works out. This is how much further this ray has to go than, say, this ray to that maximum. All right, and constructive interference, remember, will happen when the path difference is an integer number of wavelengths. So one wavelength or two wavelengths or five wavelengths. If the path difference is an, an integer number of wavelengths, you get constructive interference. So the equation we're going to come up with is set them equal. All right. Uh, with the diffraction grading, we typically name n the order. We're going to look at what we call the order of the diffraction um, maxima. So there's a zeroth order and a first order and a second order maximum. Uh, so we'll look at a picture of that in a second that I think will help. As always, lambda is the wavelength of the light coming into uh, my grading here. Little d is the same as it was before. It's the distance between the slits. And theta is the angle to the nth maxima. Right, so I can find the angle to the first 
maximum or the angle to the second. Notice if n equals zero, the zeroth order, the angle will always be zero. Right? Uh, that's how I would get that. The sine of zero is zero. But everything else, n equals one, n equals two, my first bright spot outside of the middle, my second bright spot outside of the middle, those will have different angles depending on, say, the wavelength of light and the separation of your slits. Okay, this is essentially what you get when you shine light through a diffraction grating. Some light shines straight through, so it forms that central kind of pinpoint of light, that zero order maximum. But then you're going to have, this is how we label them, so be careful, this can be a little confusing. Uh, but these will be n equals 1, these will be n equals 2, these will be n equals 3. So my second order, for example, maximum over here and over here. And, um, one question the IB loves to ask you about, in fact, we'll try one at the end here, is how many maxima will you see? Because these angles are big, you can look at this picture here and imagine if it's spreading out like this you won't get a fourth order maximum like in this setup. Um, it would have to go like this maybe to get to that fourth order and you, you can't diffract more than 90 degrees or else you're not going through the, the diffraction grating anymore. So because the angles are so big, there is like a limit to how many of these bright spots you're going to see. Um, and so they like to ask that question, how many will you see? In this case, it would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bright spots you would see on the screen. All right, uh, so a maximum possible angle of diffraction is 90 degrees is a good tip to remember. The other thing that you'll see a lot is this kind of thing. Um, you might play with these in class. Uh, the diffraction grading will say something like 400 lines per millimeter or 12,000 lines per inch. That's how many slits there are per unit length. So they're very, 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 again, scored, like very, very tight together. Um, so just think about what that means. If there's 400 lines per millimeter, the distance between each line must be 1 over 400 in millimeters. Yeah. Um, so you take the reciprocal of that because uh, you got to use your physics brain here and think about, okay, D, what I want is at the distance between two adjacent slits. So if I know there's 400 and 1 millimeter, I better divide 1 by 400. All right, here's a kind of formal factor labely kind of way that you could do it with some dimensional analysis. 1 over 400 lines per millimeter, so I got this many millimeters and 400 lines. Convert, 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 and you should find that there's this spacing between uh, each, each line. In other words, that's the spacing between the slits, so we would call that little d. Um, all right, there's just an example number, but that's a very common thing that you'll see in these problems. Okay. One of the main uses for... A diffraction grating is to disperse light. Remember, dispersion means to break it up into its component wavelengths. So here's an example of purple light. Purple, which is an equal mixture of, let's say, red and blue light combined together. When red and blue hit your eyeball at the same time, your eye goes, whoa, let's call that purple. Um, and so there's that purple light shining through because at uh, here in this picture, they're using M, but that's what the IB is calling N. Uh, at that zeroth order maximum, the angle for red light and blue light is both zero, so they'll still be purple here. But for n equals 1, my first order maximum, see if you can look at the equation and convince yourself of this, you definitely want to know red and blue, which one has a longer wavelength, but red should get bent at a greater angle than blue if I use that equation. All right? And so the red will get split up from the blue, so you'll see that this purple light is indeed made of red and blue light. It would shine purple in the middle and like red way over here and blue over here. So you would see the different pieces that make it up. Many different points in physics when we're studying, especially atomic physics or astrophysics, we really are interested in seeing what different wavelengths make up a source of light. It can tell us a lot about chemical composition and all kinds of other stuff. All right, so that's what we use it for, analyzing... Uh, gas spectra, stars, elements, all kinds of stuff. Uh, a lot of it, which we'll study later in the course. Okay, here's another picture that just shows the same kind of thing. This is, again, that idea of purple light being split up into blue and red. Um, and if you have white light shining through a diffraction grating, white light, remember, is made up of all of the colors of the rainbow, and then some. It's, it's probably also infrared and ultraviolet and so on and so on. But of the stuff we can see, the visible spectrum will be smeared out then. 
the red light will get sp will get diffracted at a great angle the blue light will get diffracted at a not so great angle and the OGB will get diffracted all in between all right the green light will get diffracted by like a medium amount so depending on its wavelength it gets spread out different amounts and so you see white light dispersed into all the colors of the rainbow with this kind of thing um here's a picture and again we'll definitely play with this kind of stuff in class if you haven't seen it already but you can really if you look through one of these things at a source of white light you see that rainbow um being being split out from the source of light all right and last here is a little uh, uh uh here's another picture same thing this is what you would see if you look through a diffraction grading at like this is a flashlight or something an led flashlight so you can see the light is being spread out red a lot blue not so much and over here in the second order it gets even more extreme if you can look at the equation think about why that is the red gets spread out a lot the blue not so much you really see all of the colors that make up this white light okay here's a problem for you to try take a moment pause it and see if you can not do this with those methods and techniques we talked about this last part you will especially need to think about what a reasonable answer is based on the math that you do all right, so give it a shot, pause the video, and then I'll show you the solution. Okay, here we go. The answer, the solution here, um, of course, we want to use our diffraction grading equation. And the idea is I want to solve for n. What's the number of diffraction maxima? So in other words, I'm kind of solving here for the order that I get at a certain angle. Uh, so the order that I get at what I'm going to do in a second is put in 90 degrees because remember that's the maximum that's the cutoff let's deal with this first I have 500 lines per millimeter so I know I got one over 500 millimeters in between each line so 0 0.002 millimeters will be my spacing a little d or in other words 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters all right so now I can start plugging things in um, that's going to be little d. I'm going to take the sine of 90 because I want to know if I look 90 degrees. So here's my diffraction grading. If I look all the way to the side, what's the last order of diffraction that I can see possibly? Um, and I'm going to plug in the wavelength of light down here. 700 nanometers. Always be careful, of course, with uh, nano. You can see that a lot. Um, and see what I get is 2.85. 2.85. Now here's what you have to think about. That means if you're looking over here at 90 degrees, what you would see way over here is the 2.85 maximum, the 2.85 bright spot, which of course is not a thing, doesn't exist, can't see it, it's not there. You only get two or three. So what this tells you when you think about it is that I don't quite see the third order maximum. All right, this is more spread out than in this picture here in this situation because of either the wavelength or the spacing. The third order maximum, mathematically, maybe would be like way back here, which is not physically possible. So I can only see up to the second order, right? I can't like round up because I can't see beyond that. So I can't, the last maxima that I would see then is two. And so since I can see up to two, now to answer the question, what's the number of diffracted maxima? Um, I'm going to have to think about it, think about what it looks like. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five maxima. Five will be the answer because I can see up to the second order, and this is how they'll be laid out. All right. There you go. So that's a classic diffraction grading kind of question. Um, uh, hopefully it will serve you well in your future adventures with diffraction gradings. Good luck.